So this is Windows Admin Center. You'll see it looks and feels just like a real one running on my system like it was before. And I'm gonna go into the settings because right now, this particular Windows Admin Center is not set up to integrate with the Dell tooling at this point. So we've got to go into extensions. Some people like to think of these as plugins, which basically extend the functionality of Windows Admin Center to include and incorporate management of additional things, in our case, Dell hardware. So if I scroll down a bit, there's our Dell Open Manage Integration version three, which is the latest. So I will click on that. Uh, I don't need to worry about reading uh, all of this information. I can obviously if I want. There's lots of, excuse me, use, useful information. Let's go ahead and click install. And quick as a flash, there we go, that's now installed. Everything works so seamlessly in an interactive demo, it's, it's crazy. And so let's go installed extensions to look at the list and you'll see now that the Dell Open Manage integration is, is one of those that's now installed and available to us. So if we go back to our, our, um, our uh, where are we here? Okay, close that out, there we go. Let's go back to our main page. Oops, all connections. Why can't I go back to all connections here? There we go, and click on our cluster. Same as what we had before. Now we get this open manage integration uh, available for us in uh, the Windows Admin Center view for this particular cluster. If I was looking at a regular Windows server in Windows Admin Center, I would not see this. This is only focused on Azure Stack HCI nodes and um, uh, AX nodes specifically. So let's click on the Open Manage integration. And once that loads, we now see a, a visual view of our all of our capabilities, all of our uh, hardware and software integration starts to start to come to come to bear here. So in this case, it's saying, well, we couldn't um, we couldn't retrieve all of the relevant information from our cluster because we've just set this up and we need to explore and add a few more prerequisites. So we'll click on health, we'll scroll down, we'll go down to prerequisite checks. We'll select our operations here. We're gonna check over our cluster, make sure everything's configured correctly. It may be that we've just got certain settings that aren't, uh, aren't correct just yet. So we can click our notification, view details. And that's going to tell us a bit more information about what's going on from a non-compliance perspective. So we'll view the details here. And in this case, we've not got all of the settings set up. So let's go and click on this top node here. And you'll see there's something enabled on the hardware that we need to essentially turn off. So we need to resolve that. In this case, I'm going to, um, I could search across all my nodes in the cluster because I just looked at a single node there and it's going, this is going to be applicable on all of them. So I would just go and remove those and resolve that. Click yes. So the goal of this interactive demo is just walking you through and giving you an environment that you can uh, try out and, and understand a bit more, read a little bit more about the experiences and also showcase uh, if you've not got access to an environment yourself. So in this case now, everything looks good. And under our inventory, if I refresh, now that everything is compliant, everything's looking good, we're going to get back information about that hardware, about that, those nodes, disks, CPUs, firmware, memory, et cetera. So all of that is now uh, in place, and we can go on from there and start to view other areas. Now, what else is, is the Open Manage integration really good for? What are some of the other, the other modules here? Well, one I like that's particularly important is lifecycle management. So if I click on the online hardware updates, one thing that's important to know here, Microsoft issue updates for Azure Stack HCI on a fairly regular cadence. I would say once a month at least, there's a cumulative update that may require a reboot. And then the annual update that is issued, 20, 20 H2, 21 H2, 22 H2, and subsequently soon, 20 or later this year, 23 H2. That's what I would call a major update. And that is one that will apply new features and functionality to the operating system. Regardless of the update, we want to be able to orchestrate that application of that patch to all of those nodes, rebooting as necessary, moving workloads around the cluster so they're not impacted by the underlying node maintenance. Now I could do all of that manually, but that's a pain, it's time consuming, it's not very efficient. Or I could use tooling that's built in from Dell and Microsoft to streamline that. But updating the operating system is only part of the puzzle. 
The other elements that are important to be updated as and when necessary include BIOS, firmwares, drivers, firmware of components. And historically, you might think, well, how would I do that? Well, I'll probably go off to Dell's website, drivers and downloads, or download the latest pack, extract the drivers that I think are the right ones for my hardware, apply them, and then move on to the next node. Well, there's a better way. And that's where the hardware update capabilities that are built into the Open Manage integration streamline that. I can orchestrate the updating of our hardware, our software, the, op the operating system uh, itself, and any patches there, all as a single unified experience. Now, to kick that off, firstly, we have to make sure that we are compliant from a hardware perspective to understand if we're missing anything. So I'll go in, in the Open Manage integration into compliance. And in this case, um, we can check the environment. I'm going to go down to hardware updates, check that compliance. And that's going to take a few minutes. First thing it's going to ask us, though, is do you want to check from a online perspective? Do you want to, us to automatically reach out to the relevant update catalogs and check everything there? Or if you're in, a, if you're in an environment where the connectivity to that environment isn't available or you want to use an offline repository, you can choose which one you want. So in this case, I'm just going to leave it as online. We'll check the compliance and off it goes. And you'll see in this case, there's a bit of green on there. There's no red, which is good. Um, but if we want to check in more detail, we can see that BIOS, non-compliance, there's NIC drivers, firmware here in this case. There's a lot of uh, orange and yellow that we could probably do to, um, to fix up. So in this case, we can do a quick search for anything non-compliant and anything's come back. Let's go on to fixing things because that's obviously what we want to do in the, in, uh, the uh, best case. Now, as I clicked fix, a warning has popped up infrastructure lock is enabled. What does that mean? Well, this is one of many security features that is built in to the Open Manage integration for Windows Admin Center. Infrastructure lock, as the name suggests, is a lock that is placed on your infrastructure, on your Azure Stack HCI nodes that prevents unwanted changes. So even updating the BIOS, the firmware, making changes in that respect is considered a, a task that should be unlocked from an infrastructure lock perspective to perform. So in this case, I would have to disable infrastructure lock temporarily. And then in this case, I can leave this tick to say, once the update operation is complete, lock things up again. And it just prevents that unauthorized or uh, unexpected change that may be uh, made to the underlying hardware configuration. Like if somebody went in and made a tweak to a BIOS setting or a processor setting, for example. Now, in this case, everything is selected for update by default, at least urgent, recommended, and, and optional. Um, uh, urgent, recommended, and optional are selected. But if I want to schedule this for later, I can go ahead. I could run it now if I want to. But if I want to schedule this for a maintenance window in at a certain time over the weekend or at some stage in the future, I've got that option as well. I'm going to run it now and let's click update. I need to enable uh, communication over Credit SSP just for this part of this process. So that's fine. And off it goes. And it's going to go ahead and apply those updates in a coordinated manner. Now, in this case, what you saw was me really just updating the hardware layer. I can also orchestrate through this updates command on the left, hardware and software as part of that as well. In this case, it's gonna go ahead and run that process and it's gonna orchestrate all of that for me. So you can see how it's started to make life easier for the admin versus all of those manual steps, gathering drivers, applying on a node by node basis. Uh, a lot of that is very time consuming, very inefficient, and doesn't really arm me with my ability to focus on my applications and workloads uh, versus just keeping the lights on, on the infrastructure. So those are some of the elements that I wanted to just walk through. And, and again, I can, I'll share the links. It's in our resources to go and have a click around on the um, and read through some of the, the, the tool tips that pop up and walk through. And if you've not got an environment, it's very helpful to walk through and, and understand a little bit more about what's, um, what's happening in this environment uh, and how the open managed integration works. The lifecycle piece, I think we're all pretty au fait with, we're all pretty well understood, not just from the benefit from the Microsoft standpoint, but if you had your VxRail hat on, 
the same kind of benefits would apply here. The same kind of benefits of reducing that manual effort to keep things up to date and working efficiently. Less time spent on maintenance, less time focused on keeping things updated, click, go, and move on to another uh, another area of focus for the business rather than just spending all your time focusing on uh, the hardware itself. And that's, that's ultimately what we want our admins to do. We want them to focus on providing the best platform with the least amount of effort for them. Now, one of the other areas that Dell has uniquely innovated in, and it relates to the open managed integration and it starts to tie things even more into Azure, is compliance. Compliance is a is a tricky thing to achieve for some organizations because how do you track it? How do you achieve compliance? What are you auditing against? And in Azure, in public Azure, Microsoft has a, a whole service dedicated to compliance. It's called Azure Policy. Azure Policy is a means in Azure for you to audit and achieve your, hopefully achieve your compliance goals for all of your Azure workloads, native Azure workloads. So for example, let's say I deployed um, 100 Linux virtual machines in Azure, and I wanted to make sure that all of those Linux virtual machines, none of them had root access enabled, which is a very, if you're not familiar, a very high privileged account. It's the highest privileged account on a Linux operating system. And as a result, if somebody gets the keys to that uh, root access, They've got pretty much full control of everything on that operating system. So disabling the root account is a common security recommendation for Linux operating systems, if appropriate. You could have an Azure policy that scans your entire Azure subscription or subscriptions for Linux VMs. And when it identifies them, it then scans to see if root access is enabled and flags those um, uh, non-compliant virtual machines for your visibility and for remediation. How does that apply to on-prem? And in particular, how does it apply to Azure Stack HCI and Dell? Well, Dell have gone the extra mile to integrate with uh, Azure Policy. So this is the Azure Policy view. And what you see will be, it might be a little bit small, so I apologize. Azure Policy view in Azure. And we have assigned policies from our uh, Azure Stack integration. We have... Um, assigned policies that we Dell have created that relate to our hardware. So there's hardware policies for uh, the configuration of the hardware, the OS configuration, the cluster configuration, and we've assigned them and integrated them with, uh, with Azure policy. If I zoom into this here a little bit, you'll see that in this case, we have four nodes in our cluster and we have uh, an element of um, non-compliance happening. There's a bit too much red for my liking on this little pie chart here. So at a high level, what it's saying here is there's stuff that we need to do. There's stuff that we need to fix if we want to be compliant. And compliancy is an interesting term because what I deem compliant may be different from what the next person deems compliant. So you are able to shape and adjust these compliance uh, policies to meet your specific environment. But a lot of these policies out of the box are set up with Dell best practices in mind. So in this case, you'll see this non-compliance message has popped up once we've drilled in a little bit deeper into this level of non-compliancy across our four nodes. And in this case, if I make it a little bit bigger, there's a specific process setting that for one reason or another, maybe infrastructure lock wasn't enabled. And so somebody's gone in and thought, you know, I'm going to turn that off. In this case, this isn't a best practice. And you can easily remediate that by setting things back to defaults in this case. Uh, obviously, infrastructure lock would need to be disabled to, to, to do that. However, there is also for certain tasks and commands remediation that's built into the tooling such that it can perform those tasks for you in an automated manner. The key takeaway here is if I wasn't using Azure Policy and things were just working fine, how would you have ever known? How would you have ever known this setting wasn't available or wasn't enabled? It may have been that it just it's it's okay to be off. It's just not as good when it's disabled. Well, now we can rectify that very easily by presenting that information in a in a Azure context, in a context that is relevant to the rest of things you're monitoring from a compliance perspective in Azure policy. So that's the big benefit of, of this integration. I don't know of any other OEM that's doing this uh, for Azure Stack HCI. <laughs> It's definitely a differentiator from a Dell standpoint.